Welcome to Loco Gringo, Mexico, where we can take you beyond the usual on your vacation. Each week, we talk with amazing locals who know the Riviera Maya and Yucatan like only locals can. Get real tips to real places. Insights on the local scene, culture, and cuisine from a local's perspective. So pour yourself a margarita, mezcal, or tequila. Grab yourself a comfy chair, and let's get the show going. Hola, everybody. Welcome to Loco Gringo, Mexico. Thanks for tuning in today. My name is Kay Walton. I'm your host. Well, you know, we talk to people time and time again who are absolutely in love with the Riviera Maya and Yucatan. And today, once again, we're going to be talking with another woman who left Los Cabos, came to the Riviera Maya, fell in love, and never left. Jory Maloney came from Los Cabos, as I mentioned, and she lives in Puerto Morelos. And she is the motivating factor behind the Puerto Morelos market. She is an artist and has her own design studio. She's going to talk a little bit about her artwork. And she also has um, an animal welfare program beyond the Riviera Rescue who does incredible things um, for dogs in the Puerto Morales area. Joy's going to be talking today about not only all of these great, exciting things that she's got going on, I swear to God, I think she's the busiest woman here in the Riviera Maya, but she's going to be also talking about some volunteer programs or opportunities that are available if you're coming down on vacation and you want to give back to the local area. We'd love to have you help. Also, she's going to share some of her favorite things that she likes to do, one of her favorite restaurants, and you're gonna, she's going to tell us the reason she wound up moving to Puerto Morelos. And I can tell you what, it's you're, you're going to be shocked at the answer. I was, um, and so you'll just have to listen to the show for at the end when she really gives us the real reason why she ended up in Puerto Morelos. This episode is brought to you by Buy Playa. You know, lots of people ask us for information and help when it comes to real estate, whether they're looking for retirement, an investment property, or maybe they're looking to relocate to the area. And we refer them over to our friends at Buy Playa. The folks at Buy Playa we've known for years, and they'll make sure that you, the buyer, are fully protected and informed when it comes to buying real estate. So if you're looking to buy a piece of paradise, check out our friends at buyplaya.com. Hey, Jory. Good afternoon. How are you? Good. How are you doing? Thank you for having me. Hey, I'm so thrilled to be chatting with you. I hear so many great things. We have some mutual friends here in the Riviera Maya, so I'm always uh, always loving the opportunity to talk to interesting folks. So if you would, Jory, for all our listeners, can you tell us how, how a girl from Canada winds up here in the Riviera Maya? Uh, it's a long time coming um, in Mexico. The first time I moved to Mexico was back in 2002 when I was just a little girl with my mom and my brother. Uh, my mom worked as a project developer and interior designer in Canada, and she got a project with 1,500 houses in Loreto, Baja California Sur, so on the west coast of Mexico. So I moved down and did all of grade 6 and half of grade 7 in Mexico with my mom and my brother. We returned to Canada to do schooling, and then I finished high school and always knew I needed to come back. So I went back to the Baja, landed there for a couple of years, fell in love, and, and ended up on this side of the country, followed a guy, and, and made it, it was the right decision. I'm happy I did, 100%, and, <laughs> and made my way over here, and now I've been here for four years. Wow, that that's amazing. Uh, yeah, I I can tell you, we've had other other guests who have followed a love interest, um, yes. to, the Riviera, to the Riviera Maya and found out that sometimes their love for the Riviera Maya lasts longer than the romance. That doesn't <laughs> happen in my case. <laughs> sometimes I don't actually know a lot whose love for the person has lasted as long as their love for the place. But uh, I'm happy that I'm here and. It was well worth the move, and it was well worth the follow because I landed myself in Puerto Morelos, and I honestly couldn't uh, can't see myself going anywhere else for quite a long time. At least, I'm very happy here. Now, what, can you tell me? I, I I haven't been to Baja. What did what what's Baja like? I mean, it, it does, what's the differences between what is Baja and the Riviera Maya? What's the difference between like the two of them? Um, I really didn't like living in Los Cabos. I thought it was a very, like, Mexican version of San Diego. So that wasn't a big fan. But where I lived up north when I was younger in Loreto, that was beautiful. 
Loretto has gorgeous mountains and fabulous waters, and so it's a super activity place, just similar here. Um, lots of fishing and scuba diving and snorkeling, just different waters, so you're going to see different things. And then they have the mountains, which have my heart, so I miss that. That's probably the one thing of the West Coast that I do really miss is growing up on Vancouver Island. We're surrounded by beautiful mountains, living in Baja, beautiful mountains. And then I come over here, and it's like I'm back in Saskatchewan. It's a little flat, but <laughs> you can't beat our water over here, that's for sure. So I think the water here is hands down better than the water there, but turquoise Caribbean sea there's, there's nowhere like it and are the beaches are the beaches better here in the Riviera Maya than they are over in Baja they're very different um, darker sand beaches rougher waters on the Baja on the west coast because you're up against the Pacific but if you're in the interior in the Sea of Cortez it's beautiful white sand beaches and teal waters you just have to be a little bit more inland and it's not tends to be where there's more tourism it tends to be where there's more just local communities living so here the beaches are phenomenal and there's so much tourists around and stuff so that's great access for them um but the water here that's just i don't think there's a beach here that has crummy water <laughs> it's all beautiful absolutely i couldn't agree more joy tell me you you've been here um you said four years correct four years yes four years now it, it's one thing to just come here on, on, on a, a vacation or even extended vacation. Um, what, what have you been doing with your time? I mean, did you start off working for someone or jump into business yourself? How, how did you, how did, and, unless you retired, unless you, unless you moved and retired um, with, no. you know, <laughs> wheelbarrows full of money and everything, which is great. <laughs> oh, I wish that would be fabulous. But I actually, when I moved here, I was eight weeks pregnant. So I worked as a scuba diving instructor in Baja and a bartender. So both my job qualifications were kind of out the window once I got here because now I was pregnant and about to become a mom. So I ended up having my son. So I was a stay-at-home wife and a stay-at-home mom, and, and I had my son. And we were in Cancun originally living in the hotel zone, and that was just not my place and not my vibe. So I ended up coming out here to Puerto and that's kind of when everything started for me. I, I was a stay-at-home mom with, with a full-time nanny, and I felt like I was doing nothing with my life and I wasn't going to go anywhere. So I'm very artistic and very crafty, so I started doing all my wood projects and wood art and reconstructive palette art. And then the art blew up, and my business got super crazy and really, really well. And that grew into another business, which grew into another, which grew into another. So I'm now currently owning and running three businesses by myself and the acting director in an animal rescue sanctuary here in town. So I'm very, very busy. Over the last four years, I've, I've gotten super, super crazy busy, but it's awesome. I love everything that I do. Wow, with all that going on, it doesn't sound like you have time to even go and see that beautiful blue water out at the beach. <laughs> You'd be surprised. I always make it work. People always tell me that same thing. Like, I don't know how you have time to do everything, and I don't know. Somehow I just find the time, and part of the benefit of working for yourself is if you want to take the afternoon off and just say, screw it, and not go to work, you, you can. So it was always very important to me to be able to make myself successful on my own and not have to be successful because of somebody else and, and off of somebody else and working for somebody else. So being a mom is obviously the most important thing. So if my kid drops down with the flu and a 100-degree fever, I can just not go to work today and I don't have to stress about anything. <laughs> it's fine. So to me, that was a super important. So I, I appreciate having made all this success for myself here in this little town. It's worked out very well. Well, kudos to you. Um, I, I, you know, it's hard with, with three businesses is really, and, 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 and a mom and everything. It's, it's hard for me to know exactly where to start. So tell me about your artwork and, and, and palette art. What is that? And, and so my company's name is, my company's name is Superb Design. So it's spelled with an X um, to integrate into the Mayan alphabet. So it's X-U-P-E-R-B designs. And I do a lot of reconstructive wood signs. So I take just any piece of board that I can find. I pick a design, um, either I cut it with my scroll saw or I hammer the design with nails and then I string it all together. So I have a race, like a regular stock of a couple hundred boards at a time and different designs. And then I do a lot of custom work. So people need a sign for their store or for their home or specifically for their, of their son's name for above his crib, right? So I do a lot of custom work in different variety pieces. 
Um, and I've now sold, oh gosh, I've been open for, I just had my two, two year anniversary in June opening this business and I've sold over a thousand boards. So it's been very, very successful. Um, it's helped a lot because it branched into my second business, which was the Port of Merlos market. So I needed a good platform other than having a store because I was a young mom and a, and a single mom and I needed a good place to, uh, to sell my art and I didn't like lugging my baby and going to the Cancun markets and stuff. It was too much for me. So I started hosting a market here in town and that blew up like <laughs> crazy. So I've done 12 editions now and I started with 22 vendors and now I've capped out at 60 and I do a market every other weekend in high season on the beach here in Puerto Morelos and I sell art like mad at those markets. So that's, really, really good. I get all the community together. I bring out 60 different handcrafted artists and food vendors and clothing makers and designers. And we all get together at the beach and have a really great day and have hundreds of tourists come through and, and shop our stuff. So it's very cool. So that's, that's, uh, uh what, it, what it's every other weekend or once what, it, what we do it on week? Saturdays. Uh-huh. We do them on Saturdays at my Paradise Beach Club every other Saturday in high season. So we run from um, the end of November to the end of April. Because the other six months, Puerto gets a very low, low season still. We get very quiet here. So I don't want to drag all my vendors and all my artisans out to have no one come up and show up for them. So for us, we run straight through for those six months, and then we take a good break for six months, and we go back to it. So it, uh, all of our events are posted on our Facebook page, which is the Port of Marlos Market, and you can follow what's going on at each event, which vendors are going to come, in case you're looking for someone special or to have a better idea how much money you're going to spend, because I always need to know that, because I always shop like crazy at these ones. <laughs> <laughs> so it's Whoa. a very fun event. So that the business kind of grew into itself, and then that's the third business is now I finally, my son is three years old, and he's old enough to... Uh, to take some responsibility on his own. And, and I was able to land an amazing locale here in Puerto Morelos. And I'm currently actually here covered in paint right now because I'm painting it all up and getting it all ready. And we're going to be opening our own storefront. So we're wow, very congratulations. excited for that. Thank you. So that's going to be very, it's been the, the dream since the business originally started a couple of years ago. And, and now it's finally coming through. So it's very exciting. Oh, that does sound super exciting. Now, the reason I got turned on to you was because of your animal rescue work. Yes. So that's my whole other side. So I'm the, <laughs> the art. So I, because of the art, is actually how the rescue started because my business partner in the rescue oh, is also a local artist here in the community. And that's how Mateo and I got connected was through our art. And then we both realized we became friends on Facebook and we both realized we had this crazy passion for dogs. And he was already rescuing a couple dogs off the street here and there as he could and as he could afford it. And I started just helping him with Facebook posts and raising money and helping him take care of the dogs. And then seven months later, we have a certified Association Civil, which is like a government nonprofit certified in the U.S. and Canada. And so we went through the whole legal side of everything and and got ourselves tax write-offs and, and government benefits, which is very little here. Um, we get more benefits as in, in the police having our back when we're removing a dog from a bad situation than funding. We get no funding from them. So we get personal assistance, but not funding assistance. So we've been doing the rescue now just coming up on a year, me and Mateo, and his wife, Heo, has joined in on our team and Margo and Ricardo, who are our amazing board members in Mexico City, who have done all of our legal and all of our government stuff and all the stuff we would have never figured out how to do. So the five of us make up this team, and, and we've already rehomed 65 dogs in one year, and we've already done over 400 sterilizations, and we, we take really, really bad cases. We don't just pick up a dog that's on the side of the street that's got a big gut and, and a family that lets them lay out in the road, right? It's a different mm -hmm. mentality on how dogs are cared for here. We pick up the dog that's got the four-pound tumor growing out of his eye that most places would just take him and put him down, but we'll keep him. We'll keep him. We'll do all of his treatment. We rehome, we re like we try and rescue them, we rehabilitate them, and we rehome them. And if we can't find them a home, they have a life with us. So we have about 10 dogs that will never be rehomed just because they're 
disabled or they have special needs or they walk funny or they breathe funny because people just don't, some people don't look beyond that when they're rescuing a dog and we're just not going to put them down just because they breathe funny. They're still happy and they're still alive and they still have life in their eyes and want to be here. So, so they get to live with us out in the jungle. So they're very, a lot of work. (laughs) It's a very demanding nonstop job that doesn't pay a dime, but it's totally worth it and totally okay. So I'm very happy with that. I I mean, I have to commend you, and I'm a huge supporter of animal welfare myself, and we've had a couple people um, from different animal organizations in the Riviera Maya who who have been on the show and talked about their journey and, of course, their passion for animals. Can you tell me, I know that, you know, Puerto Morales has always been associated very closely to Cancun. It's just south of the city. Um, Do you get an opportunity to network with other veterinary groups or animal welfare programs that are here in yeah, Cancun or Riviera Maya? Yeah, we're really, really big on rescues helping rescues. So we work in direct contact. Um, our vet clinic that we use here in the Riviera is Plant Pet Hood International Training Center. So they're five kilometers south on the highway from Puerto heading towards Playa, and they're an international veterinarian training center. So we get to work hands-on with very cool vets. They're also a rescue center. We work directly with Coco's Animal Welfare in Playa. They do our spay and neuter campaigns with us and help us a lot with cats because we're not cat people. We deal with dogs solely. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, we, we love dogs. We don't love cats so much. We each have one, Aww. but that's our, our limit. And um, so we work with them. We work with Rod's Kitty Cottage also in Playa. We work with the Snoopy Project in Playa, Mexi Paws, and then we do work with three rescues in Canada as well. So those rescues in Canada, um, Dibs especially is our big shout out to Dibs. They're amazing. They're based out of Mississauga, Ontario, and they take about half of our dogs from us here and rehome them for us up in Canada. So we just have to get them healthy and ready and ready to be in a home. And then we find flight escorts from here to Toronto and the escorts take the dogs up to the rescue. And then from there, the rescue gets them in foster care and finds them the appropriate family. So they save us a huge help because that's honestly the hardest part isn't saving them and fixing them. It's finding them the right home. And so they, they help us out a lot. So we do a lot of, rescues helping rescues and donating to each other like Tierra de Animales last month had a one of their calfies fell in one of the dog cages and got attacked by a dog and he got landed with a big vet bill and he actually took him to our veterinarian clinic that we used and we had a dog the week before who we got a lot of donations for and he sadly ended up passing away at the clinic so we used some of his donations we received to pay for the calfies bill so we just really like to help each other out because we all need it in the end. Like if I find a dying horse on the side of the street, I don't have the the first clue what to do with it. But if I have a rescue buddy who likes me and is on my side and we have the same goals in the end and he does rescue horses, he's not going to be a jerk. He'll help. Right. So Mm -hmm. we all really have to work together because we all have the exact same goal in the long run of things. We have different ways of operating, but we're all working towards the exact same thing. So you have to work together. I think. You become that like shunned animal rescue that nobody likes, which is not what I want. <laughs> no, I, I understand. I've seen I've seen a few that have come and gone over my tenure here in the Riviera Maya. It, it is yeah. absolutely beautiful, and everybody's and and I think a lot of people and and most people when they get involved with animal rescue, it's just their heart their heart just aches and longs for these animals um, to get help them um, be healthy and give them a better way of life. Yes, absolutely. So I have to, you know, I, I, I've done work with Cocos, and, and, and I've known them. I got my first cat. I now own a dog. I'm now crossed over to dog lover, but I used to be a big cat lover. <laughs> and, and, and so I got one of my, one of my cats was from, was from Cocos, and we've done work with Cocos, and I like to pop in every now and again to do their little kitten cuddle so I can get my little yep. bit of kitten love. Um, what to, are there opportunities for people, whether it's like myself or we have visitors that, you know, our listeners who come to the area on vacation who, who either want to maybe find, rescue an animal to take, uh, to take home as a pet or to participate or help out? Do you have those types of opportunities in place yet? Because I know you guys are pretty new. 
Yes, we do weekly volunteer days on every Wednesday, and then we know Wednesday is a tough day for a lot of people, so we actually do one big volunteer day every Saturday, or sorry, one Saturday of every month. So we post the one Saturday of every month on our Facebook, which is just Riviera Rescue. So we post the one Saturday of every month, and we do everyone meets at one central location, and we drive out together because we are in the middle of the jungle off of a side dirt road. So we're not super easy to find on our own. So that's why we can't do daily drop-ins. But anytime someone wants to adopt an animal, we, uh, we'll usually either bring them out to the rescue if they don't know what animal they specifically want so they can meet all of them, or if there's one that they've got their heart set on, or just two that they've got their heart set on, we'll bring them and meet them at the clinic because it's an easier location to find. It's got air conditioning, and it's not in the middle of the jungle, so it's always just <laughs> a little bit nicer. So we usually do our meets at the, uh, at the vet- veterinarian clinic, um, and then, yes, every Wednesday we do a volunteer and one Saturday of every month. Great information, for sure, and I really want to encourage anybody who's listening, all our listeners on the show, that, you know, if you're coming down to the area to participate in any of these local community programs, whether it's a a school-run program, animal welfare, is that we we invite you to participate because you get a different view of the people and the culture than than just sitting on on the beach uh, drinking a margarita, though that's great, too. it just well, gives, gives you a good angle. reason to go sit on the beach and drink a margarita. <laughs> if you yeah, go and celebrate. volunteer for four hours in the morning, you don't feel so cruddy that you're sitting on the beach all day and drinking. You actually got up and did some good, and now it's totally worth sitting on your butt for the rest of the day. That's exactly. what we end up getting a lot of vacationers coming out and helping, and they see it the same because we're done by noon. It's way too hot out in the middle of the jungle to work past noon. So you're home and on the beach by 1230 anyways. You would have only gone there at 11. So you've missed an hour of your, your beach time, and uh, but you've done something good. So it's all worth it. So we like having our – and then a lot of people end up falling in love with dogs for sure when they come out. And we've had a few awesome times where a dog ends up getting taken back by, by the volunteers that came on vacation and totally fell in love. And we get them on the flight home with them, and they get to go off and start their new life. So that's very cool when that happens. Wow. It, you're a busy lady. I commend you for for all of your ambitions <laughs> and the successes, for sure. So, thank Joy, you. And I, I got to ask. I mean, you're. I know you. You've said your passion and your heart here in the Riviera Maya, and it's it's so easy to fall in love here. Um, what type of experiences? Or tips can you offer people who are coming to the area? And I know you got you, you don't have lots of free time in all of this and raising <laughs> a son, but what are some of the things that you have found in, in in your downtime or your experiences that people coming to the area should really take advantage of, participate in, so they get a more of an authentic flair? I know we talk about, certainly about volunteering. Um, do you have any other favorites that's, that's your personal faves when you when you're you're away from mm-hmm. the the Puerto Morelos market and and the animals and everything? Do you have any tips for us? I love the cenotes and I love scuba diving. So those are my two big go tos when I get a chance to get away from work. There's the cenotes are amazing. I mean, of course, there's ones that are more beautiful than others, but I think they're all worth checking out. And, I don't know if I'll ever get to see them all. There's so many, right? It's very, very cool. So you can get one experience to another from one cenote to another park. Um, I really like the jungle here. As much as the beach is beautiful, I think the jungle is something really special and magical. And and when you're swimming in like a sunken water hole in the middle of nowhere and the beautiful lime green and aqua colored birds are flying around and funky different animals are crossing your path, I think that's really special. And then again, when you're under the water and you're actually getting to see the beauty down there when you're scuba diving in the cenotes or scuba diving in the ocean, it's just phenomenal here. I think those are two things you really can't miss. And some people, yes, have the fear of scuba diving. So the snorkeling here is just as great if you're not afraid of the ocean completely. <laughs> it, uh, if you can't build up the fear to, uh, to go and, and to go and dive, you can definitely see some beautiful things in our water just going and snorkeling. I don't think you can miss those. Like you can sit on your butt on the beach every day, but you've got to check out the cenotes because there's none like it anywhere else in the world. And Any you just got to go get out on the water. Any, um, any I really like the ones one? we have. Uh, 
the ones we have in the Ruta de Cenotes, Kin Ha is my favorite in the Ruta de Cenotes. It's at uh, mm-hmm. kilometer 15. Uh, along the Ruta, though, there is, I would say, easily access to 60 different cenote parks, and lots of them are just on individual family land. And so they'll have a little wooden sign out front. You just get to pull up, and, and you're usually there by yourself. So it's very cool getting to check those out. Um, my One of my best friends is actually visiting right now, and we went out to Ekbalam, the ruins in the Yucatan. So we drove all the way out there a little while back, and uh, they have a cenote at Ekbalam. And that was probably one of my favorite ones I've ever been to. It had about a 50 meter drop down in, but it was a completely open face cenote. So you got the cave seal, but without being trapped in a cave. And, and it was so cool. So they're very, each one is so individual, but they're so unique. And I've never actually taken somebody to the cenotes and had them disappointed with their experience. It's always very cool. Uh, I, I, that was the cenotes were the main reason I came to the Riviera Maya. So I, I couldn't agree yeah. with you more. Um, I wasn't a big beach person, and so the cenotes definitely hold magic for me. L- let me ask you: as we talk about scuba diving, um, how, can you tell people a little bit? I know a lot of people. You know, they dr- they're driving past, they're headed to Tulum, maybe to go see the ruins and that. Can you talk about what it is to, to scuba dive out of Puerto Morelos? Because the the area in front of Puerto Morelos, the, the reef is a national marine park, correct? Correct. Yeah, correct. So we have a marine park status here in Puerto. And so we have absolutely incredible diving because it hasn't been fished away. We have easily 40 accessible dive sites here and that the, that the dive shops um, rotate throughout. There's definitely the more popular ones, um, like the sunken, the sunken military ship we have here in town. That's a very common dive, but it's beautiful and it's well worth it because all the eagle rays like to hang around the wreck. And so you go and all of a sudden you're just swimming with rays. There's a lot of very shallow dives, which is awesome for beginners here because once you actually get out to the reef, which is about one or half a mile, sorry, offshore, you get out there and there's points you can stand or there's points that are only 12 feet deep and the max depth at 22 with your hand in the sand. So you can go and dive without having to be super deep down, which is what a lot of people have that fear of. They're like, I don't want to be 200 feet under the water and in a dark area. Like, no, you're just experiencing this beauty, but from actually under the water versus just floating on top. So we have beautiful, beautiful dive sites here in Puerto Morelos. There's so many to choose from. And, and you're in a different location from where you're just snorkeling. So you don't have people swimming all around you and hundreds of people jammed into one area. You might have one other dive boat at your dive site and that's it. So that's very nice. You're not having to fight over the little bit of space where you have a very open, open selection. Oh, Beautiful. Very nice. And you, can you snorkel out there too? I mean, is it just for divers yeah. or with it, it being that shallow, you can probably hop, if you're a snorkeler, you could just hop the boat, correct? Yeah, yeah. They have uh, hundreds of boats here on the docks and on off of the uh, off of the beach that you can just hop on the boat and they'll take you to two or three locations for you to check out the differences in the spots in the marine park and that you can snorkel. And so there's lots of different packages you can negotiate with the guys up on the marine dock. So right, if you come right into Puerto Marlos, there's the main dock right beside the, the lighthouse, our famous tilted lighthouse, and there'll be 50 guys there to pick from to head out, and you can just hop on a little ponga and, and go out and snorkel, and they actually have the equipment and the life jackets and everything, so it makes it super easy and, and an affordable activity to do. I, I have to ask, since you're from Puerto Morelos, and, I, and this comes up, it must be something about everybody who lives in Puerto Morelos, is that the con- food always comes up in conversation, and people are talking about some of their favorite places to eat and, so, and, and places that people shouldn't miss. So I have to ask, do you have, a fa- you have a favorite restaurant or a place you can go where you just the food is just awesome, whether it's street food or fine dining? Do you have a, do you have a particular place that you just crave? My go-to is always El Nicho. That's my craving. El food. Nicho. So they're a breakfast restaurant. Yeah, they're open from 7 a.m. until 2 p.m. seven days a week, and they're found right on Town Square um, across from the Children's Park in front of the church. And they've got classic breakfast like classic American breakfast, like bacon and eggs and um, eggs benedict, which is their best. 
and down to like regular traditional Mexican breakfast. And then they've got sandwiches and salads and beautiful, beautiful food and amazing owners. And they also support the local artists by selling their art inside. And they've got a very cool vibe. And and in high season, they do open in the evenings with a second chef and a second menu. But for slow season, it's just mornings. But I could eat Eggs Benedict there every day of the week. It's so good. (laughs) That sounds like a decadent breakfast to have seven days it's a week. It's actually why I moved. Yeah, it's actually why I moved to Puerto Morelos. Believe it or not, my my ex <laughs> and I were living in Cancun, and when I was pregnant, I craved egg Benedict, and I hated eggs Benedict my whole life. And all of a sudden, I get pregnant. And all I want to eat is eggs Benedict, and I went on the like the Cancun expat page and asked where the best place to go was, and everyone says drive out to Puerto Morelos and go try them. And that was the very first time I ever came to Puerto Morelos. I would have been probably four or five months pregnant, and it was to have the eggs Benedict. And still now, four years later, I'm here and still eating those same eggs Benedict. They don't even give me a menu when I go in now. They just know what I'm drinking and eating. <laughs> That's awesome. It's a great little you know, place. I'm going to take advantage of the fact that you're a mom. And I wanted yes. to know, why, why we've got some time here, is do you have any tips for moms who are traveling with young kids? Because I think sometimes people worry, you know, if there's going to be enough to do, um, it, you know, are there certain special concerns they should have if they have young kids? Can you shed any light on that? For me, I think Puerto is, like, so family-friendly. Like, there's not one restaurant here in Puerto Morelos at 10 o'clock in an evening if your baby started crying that anyone would be pissed off. No one cares. Like, it's so family-friendly here in this town. The beach is even family-friendly. Because we have the reef half a mile offshore, we never have waves. You can always be swimming on our beaches, unlike Playa and unlike Cancun that do get really big waves. Our beaches are safe for kids here in town. Everything's walking distance here in town. We have a playground in town square. On either side, we have a playground in town square. We... I mean, every, yeah, like I said, every restaurant is family friendly here. Um, kids are welcome everywhere. I've never experienced any time that I've had my son out here in town that he wasn't welcome. It's uh, even Cancun, actually. I find that people here in general, it's just so family friendly. Like if I went to a fancy steakhouse downtown Vancouver and someone had their three-year-old kid on a Friday night, probably would make me mad because that's just what you're used to up there. We're here. It doesn't matter. It's so normal. Those places have... Lots of restaurants in Cancun and in Playa even have the play centers for kids. So mom and dad can have a nice fancy dinner and bring their children and the kids can go off and play in like the sense of the McDonald's play zone, but much fancier. But it's such a family oriented country and there's, you need to basically bring your baby's car seat with you because everywhere has has cribs. All the vacation rentals have cribs or they get one from another vacation rental. So you have one less thing to travel with. You can get in and out of taxis quickly with your baby's car seat. So that's fast or walk everywhere with your stroller because everywhere's walking distance here in town. So we also have a great mom group um, on Facebook, just the mom support the Morelos. And and on there, people join that are coming for vacation. And and we get together with our kids on the beach or meet up at the playground on Sunday morning. and, And there's always stuff to do. There's great places to take your kids here in town. Wow. Great information. Joy, I want to thank you for taking time out of your day, and I would, and I invite you, please, just to, you know, you, if you've, you've got so much stuff going on, is to please keep in touch with me, because I'd yes, love to, absolutely. you know, have you on future shows, whether it's to talk about the Puerto Morelos Market, um, about your artwork and its superb designs, and then, of course, yep. beyond the Riviera Rescue, anything, anything that Loco Gringo can do to help support you guys, um, you know, or promote events and in, pass along information to our guests, our listeners, and everything, we're more than happy to. Um, where's the best place that, that people can reach out to you? Um, the best place to reach out to me would be off of Riviera Rescue. Um, I deal with all the, the marketing and social media and communications there, so anytime someone emails or messages Riviera, that goes directly towards me. So. So that's the best place someone can reach out, whether it's the art or the market or, or anything. They can get a hold of me through, through the rescue profile. Beautiful, beautiful. Jory, thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me on the show. It's been great. Well, are you inspired now to move down here? 
Do you want to move down here and have a little place of your own? Well, then you need to talk to our friends at Bi Playa. You know, they have a friendly and knowledgeable international staff. They speak lots of languages and they are known as being a buyer's agent. Well, what does that mean? That means they are only going to show you and sell you properties they know that have escrituras and escritura is a title. And it's part of their due diligence to make sure the title is clear, there's no liens, and that the person who's selling the property is actually the owner. Bi Playa works with lawyers that specialize in fideicomisos, which is a Mexican trust. You may have heard of it already before. And they can address things such as capital gains problems immediately and right up front so that you have no surprises along the way to closing. So contact our friends at Bi Playa at buyplaya.com. Well, thanks for tuning in, everybody. But before you go, I just want to remind you to go to today's show notes at locogringo.com forward slash podcasts. And we're going to have links over to Jory's um, Facebook pages for the Puerto Morelos market for Beyond the Riviera Rescue for her dog program. So you can keep up with all these activities that she's got going on that you can participate in or shop at um, while you're here in the area. Now, one thing I want to remind you guys is that we have a concierge, Paulina. And I want to just let you know, because I don't think all of y'all know this, is that Paulina will help everybody. And what do I mean? Everybody? Absolutely everybody. She is a great concierge for all of you who book your reservations, and we help you find the perfect place to stay when you come through Loco Gringo. But she's there for all of you who may have not found Loco Gringo until after you've already booked something else. Or maybe your friends have have arranged your vacation and you're looking for a little information on your own, Paulina is your gal. She can help you whether you're looking for groceries or babysitting, um, a vegan restaurant, seafood, uh, what else? A private driver, tours, information of IODelete. What do you need? Paulina is your Siri. She's the go-to. You know, Loco Gringo knows a lot of stuff, and she is your go-to gal um, for making sure that your vacation runs really smoothly and that you have all the information you need to have a great time. We really love the Riviera Maya and Yucatan, and we think you should too, so don't be afraid to reach out to Paulina. Her email address is concierge at locogringo.com. Thanks for listening. If you like the show, be sure to subscribe. For links, show notes, and more information, head on over to LocoGringo.com or give us a call toll-free at 800-478-0081. Porque se tragó la luna, estaba enferma la rana, su madre soba que soba de dos de pluma la panza, pensó ranita que luna... Era una toronja blanca Y aunque la luna es de leche La leche estaba cortada Croa, croa Dedos de pluma Croa, croa Dedos de agua Croa, croa